Chatteries Corner, E Hop for D High So in Gouda, Pennsylvania Dutch recipe. I've been so excited for this so and buys a vasi himaka sale. Vas i maka sale. Wow, my Dutch is getting. Woo, I can't talk so fast when I do that. I have an amazing recipe. It's a Pennsylvania Dutch recipe. However, it is from British and German descent. When I say Pennsylvania Dutch, the Dutch really have nothing to do with it. It's Pennsylvania Deutsch, which is a German recipe. Deutsch is for German, and that's with our descendants. I have with me the Mennonite Community Cookbook. My Aunt Hilda Yoder has recipes in this cookbook. This is an amazing cookbook. And she was born in 1914. She passed away a few years ago. And she was an amazing woman and an amazing cook. And in this cookbook is the recipe for chicken pot pie. Yes, pot pie. What makes it Pennsylvania Dutch is because of the square, thin, yellow noodles they're called butt boy, hingle butt boy, chicken pot pie. First of all, you wanna start out with a really great stainless steel pot. And I have my Vita Sana, Princess House Vita Sana pot. And in the pot, this recipe is really simple. And you know, years ago, when they fed large families, eight or 12 or 16 people around the table, they needed something that was gonna stretch. And this was a great recipe for that because they could cook some chicken, the wife could cook some chicken and get a big uh, pot of broth and throw some carrots in there that she had in the garden, throw some potatoes in, and then with only four ingredients, flour, eggs, water, and salt, she could make the pot boy. So we've got some chicken in here, I'm, I have this, my um, chicken breast and chicken thighs. I have it covered with some water and celery, onion, and carrots. While this is cooking, we're going to make the butt boy. The hingle butt pie is fatty. The chicken pot pie is finished. Shall we open the pot? Turn off the burner. Look at that chicken pot pie. We ended up adding some parsley, salt, and pepper. I dished up a plate for myself right here. Are you ready, folks? I can't wait. When I was a kid, I just loved to pick the pot pie up out of the pot and eat it like that. Mmm. Mmm! That's the real deal! Mm. I wish my, my mother was here. I would just love to show her. Mm. And thank you to my sister, Faye, for making the pot pie because I didn't have much experience with that. I just have experience with eating it. Mmm, mmm. You like this? Mmm, 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 mmm. The juice is so flavorful. Do you see that? With some fresh parsley in there. Mmm, mmm, mmm. This is so good. If you want to know, the detail about how to make this, stay tuned to the video. If you just want to see me eat it, we're done. So if you're getting off right here, I'll see you next time. Hi, I'm Faith and I am Chattery's sister. Not quite like Chattery, but uh, maybe someday when I grow up. So I'm making the pot pie for the chicken pot pie. And we take two cups of flour, one, two. And then we make a little well in the flour. And in that well, you put your eggs, two eggs, one, two, two eggs. You take a half a teaspoon of salt, I like sea salt, and you spread it. And then you just mix it, 
I just use a fork. You can use whatever. You mash up your eggs in there and you mix it in the flour. All through the flour, I know. It's kind of um, clumpy towards the center at first, but you just keep, you just keep mixing it into the flour like so. I can be a little messy when I do my prepping, so. I mean, the stuff flies. But see how that's mixing real nicely through there? You just take your fork, just kind of push it through. It's getting nice. Okay, I'm getting there. Then I'm gonna take a little bit of water because it's a little dry. See how it's a little dry. I'm gonna take some water. You take about two to three teaspoons. Excuse me, that's tablespoons, not teaspoons. Get all my egg off of this fork. All right, I think we're ready for a little bit of water because that'll make it hang together so that it's not uh, a little bit like the pie dough. So in here I have three tablespoons and I just pour until I get it to the consistency that I need. You just pour a little bit in there. Mix it around as you're pouring it. Okay, looks like it's doing a nice job. Then I take my hands and I mix it. Boy, you can tell it's sticking together now. That's what helps it stick together. Na telema de bot boy as rola. Is that good Dutch? I can a bit lee spreha yes. No. Oh, has come hot. Okay, sprinkle some flour on the surface. Notice how nice my bot boy got. Nice, it hangs together. I usually put a little bit of flour on my, and you start rolling. Now the secret to this is rolling it real thin. You want it thin, very, very thin. Just roll it. Use your muscles, build your muscles. Oh yeah. You don't have to go work out today because you're working those muscles. Do you see how nice this looks? And it looks a little mottled, but that's that's good. That's good. Yeah, I'm rolling because I want it really, really thin. Why should it be thin? Well, my mother always said that we had to have it thin. It has to be really thin. But I think because back in the day, it was stretched, it went a long way. And also, it's slippery. And that's how you want it. You don't want it thick and doughy. Slippery. Slippery. It's supposed to be slippery. All right, we're ready to cut it. Now, let me show you. I don't know if you can see this, but I mean, it is, it is almost paper thin. It is really, a lot of times the center is still a little thicker. So I usually make sure that my center is thick. Then I take my cutter. 
I use a pizza dough cutter, but you could use a knife, a good sharp knife, whatever you have in the kitchen. And you make about, oh, I don't know. Uh, I don't make them real big, maybe an inch to an inch and a half square. You can make them as big or as little as you like. See, now my, some of mine are getting kind of thin. This at the end here, I'm gonna, all right. And then you go the other way and you make nice squares. The unique part is you can make some big, some little. You don't have to be perfect. It makes it unique. There you go. I'm gonna leave those big at the end. So there you have it. Then I just take a little uh, shifley, one of these. I call it a shifley. You just pick them up. There you have your black boy. Cooked. The chicken's cooked. Und ich hab's auf die Bohnen genommen. Und ich bin Stonei und Schneider. I'm cutting the chicken in chunks and putting it in to the delicious broth. The broth smells wonderful. Then you add about three or four potatoes chunked, small chunks. I'm throwing that in. And for some color in my chopper, I did one carrot. I love, love, love that for some color. I'm, I have the burner on. We're just gonna give that about 10 minutes to finish cooking and then we'll add the bot boy. Okay, so we're back and the potatoes are soft. I'm gonna put in my bot boy. You wanna make sure that it's laying in the rolling boil, that it goes down in. And make sure, yes, make sure it's a rolling boil like this. how they look. And if, if it starts to fill up, I take as either a spoon or a fork or something and I pull it aside, kind of let it, lay it down in there. You want it to go down into the broth. I have all my pot pie in there. Beautiful. How long do you cook it? And then I cook it for about 15 minutes. I put the lid on, turn it down on low. And in 15 minutes, we will have our chicken pot pie. Things as we end the chicken pot pie. We did add some more chicken broth because when you add the doughy pot pie, it does soak up a lot of the juices and you do want it to have some juice in it like this. We salted, peppered it, we got some fresh parsley, put some fresh parsley in there, and that basically finishes it off. And let me tell you, this pot pie is slippery. It is, I don't know how to explain it. When you eat it, it just has that slippery, I don't know, it's so delicious. Hey, go make yourself some chicken pot pie, and then you can put your hat on and say, Hey, we are eating Pennsylvania Dutch tonight. I'll see you next time.